why are you so good to me? Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the effects of coffee on your skin. And I'm gonna be dispelling some myths that I frequently hear about the effects of drinking coffee on things like acne and dry skin. You all know I pretty much require coffee to live. I love it, I'm a coffee enthusiast, and my absolute favorite coffee, the one I drink every morning, is the Four Sigmatic Ground Mushroom Coffee with Lion's Mane and Chaga. Today's video is in partnership with Four Sigmatic, and you guys, I can't believe it's already here. It's that time of year, their annual site-wide sale for Black Friday Cyber Week. Running November 23rd through November 25th, site-wide you can get up to 50% off your favorite Four Sigmatic items. Even better, if you use the link in my description box, you can get an additional 10% off. Definitely take advantage of it. This is when I stock up on my favorites like the good old ground mushroom coffee or their amazing plant-based proteins. I think it's safe to assume that most people appreciate the fact that coffee has caffeine in it. That's what gives it that energizing kick and it's what transforms me into a human being every day. But a lot of times people will just comment, you know, caffeine is a diuretic, right? So surely it's going to dehydrate you and that's gonna show up as dry skin and gonna make you more likely to have issues related to dry skin like itch. It's actually not true. Caffeine is at most a very mild diuretic. Studies show that there's no difference in the amount of urine people put out who drink coffee versus those who just drink water. They're basically the same. You're going to pee just as much if you are a coffee drinker as you would if you were, you know, you just pl drink plain water. Simply going to the bathroom a lot doesn't dry out your skin uh, so long as you continue to take in water. It also doesn't make a lot of sense. Brewing coffee requires water, you know, in order to ingest it, you're consuming water. Most people don't just eat ground coffee. Uh, so you're, you're taking in water with it anyways to offset that mild, if any, diuretic effect. So that's not true. Coffee does not lead to dry skin. The other thing in coffee that you may not be aware of is antioxidants. Now, antioxidants are really helpful for your overall well-being, but importantly, they can make a huge difference in the health of your skin. What do antioxidants do? Well, they scavenge free radicals that are generated from environmental exposures like ultraviolet radiation, pollution, tobacco smoke, and we know that people who consume a diet rich in antioxidants from things like fruits and vegetables, their skin is actually better equipped to handle the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation in comparison to those who don't. So getting antioxidants in your diet actually helps your skin out a lot. Free radicals cause many of the visible signs of photoaging, namely wrinkles, fine lines, loss of elasticity and snap, loss of recoil, Skin conditions like acne and eczema, these are inflammatory skin conditions. And getting antioxidants in your diet can help offset the inflammation that drives these disease processes. If anything, drinking coffee might actually end up helping these things out in the long run because of the antioxidants and because it is packed with anti-inflammatory compounds. Is it safe to drink coffee? The devil's in the details, as with anything, it's not the poison, it's the dose. How much are you consuming? It's fine to consume one to two to three cups a day, but anything greater than four is probably overkill and not great for your health. The reason for this is that the caffeine in coffee, if, when consumed in excess, can cause jitters and increase your anxiety, and it can also upregulate stress responses. Stress responses lead to increase in stress hormones, namely cortisol, that subsequently increases insulin levels. And we know that insulin drives inflammation in the skin and increases oil production, and it also causes uh, kind of an abnormal proliferation of the skin cells that can plug up the pores. And these things culminate in flares of acne. So it is possible that if you are consuming too much coffee and you're getting too much caffeine, this is amplifying your stress responses and could be contributing to the acne flares. Also, we know that people who consume coffee uh, or caffeine before a stressful event have an even greater elevation in the stress hormone cortisol in comparison to just going through the stressful event itself. So it's probably a pragmatic approach to not consume coffee like right before, right before a really stressful event. It can make you jittery and can increase those stress hormones. So maybe not a good idea to have coffee right before you have to give a presentation that you might be nervous about. 
However, if you're like me, I, you know, I, I have better cognition on coffee and caffeine, so that actually would, wouldn't work so well for me. Uh, but for, you know, most people don't consume too much right before a stressful event. And too much caffeine, whether it be from coffee or some sort of energy drink, it, it can make you feel very anxious. It can cause jitters and it can increase your heart rate, especially if you are sensitive to caffeine. Some people just are inherently sensitive. If that's you, then you can still drink coffee. Just maybe choose a decaf coffee or consume less of it. Just limit it to maybe one cup a day. I think a lot of the conversation and the myths and misconceptions about coffee, they all focus around caffeine. But caffeine, especially when consumed in moderation, is really not that dangerous. And in fact, it may be helpful in the long run. We have evidence to show that coffee drinkers have improved overall mortality. And also we have evidence to show that people who drink coffee might have a lower risk of certain skin cancers, further demonstrating the benefit of coffee to your skin. The narrative around coffee and acne sometimes focuses too much on caffeine. However, how you take your coffee can make a difference. For example, uh, skim milk and dairy is associated with acne. The proteins whey and casein, these are milk proteins that are associated with increased inflammation in the skin and specifically are associated with stubborn acne. As a matter of fact, people who consume whey protein supplements, they often can experience acne related to that that goes away or improves when they stop consuming whey whey protein supplements. Beyond the dairy and the dairy proteins, the other thing in your coffee that could be driving your acne is added sugar. A lot of people add a lot of sugar to their coffees and sugar increases insulin, uh, spikes your insulin, and that can drive a lot of inflammation into the skin and increase oiliness and really can be associated with stubborn acne. So if you are battling acne and you think it might be due to your coffee, take a look at your coffee. How are you consuming it? Are you drinking a ton of it and you're stressed out and jittery? Are you using a lot of creamer or dairy, uh, you know, milk, skim milk? Are you adding a ton of sugar? A lot of coffee shops, they have these specialty drinks that have so much sugar in them. People don't realize it. And that is the culprit when it comes to flares of acne, not the coffee. He's just kind of an innocent bystander in there. So coffee ends up being guilty by association, I think in a lot of people's minds when it comes to worsening acne. I cannot imagine starting my day without coffee. Every morning, I love having a cup of the Four Sigmatic Ground Mushroom Coffee with Lion's Mane and Chaga. It is 100% organic, fair trade, single sourced Arabica beans, and it also has Chaga Mushroom and Lion's Mane Mushroom. If you're not familiar with these mushrooms, they are packed with antioxidants and micronutrients. So they elevate the coffee drinking experience and they elevate the benefits of drinking coffee. Now, you cannot taste mushrooms whatsoever in the coffee or in any of the Four Sigmatic products. They kind of bring out the intricacies of the coffee flavor profile and make it a more enjoyable experience. I've been drinking this coffee for a few years now, and one of the things that stood out to me early on and has continued to hold true is the fact that I find this coffee is a lot more satisfying than ordinary non-mushroom coffee. And because of that, I consume less coffee overall. So if you're somebody who experiences a lot of jitteriness from drinking coffee, you may be drinking too much, try this. It really is much more satisfying in my opinion and tastes delicious. You can do it in a French press, you can do it as a pour over, or you can do it in a standard drip machine. The other product from Four Sigmatic that I really enjoy and encourage you to check out is their plant-based protein powder. This is a delicious vegan protein. It's a balanced amino acid profile of five plant proteins, and it's got seven amazing different mushrooms and adaptogens, which again, add antioxidants that help you stay satisfied, reduce free radical damage, and overall can help support your immune system so you can stay healthy and keep you from getting run down. A little tip, you know, I mentioned about the issues of adding dairy or a lot of sweetener to your coffee, and you, you may like the taste of that, but maybe you're trying to cut back on some of that. Try adding some protein powder to your coffee. Um, I highly suggest their um, chocolate protein powder. You can blend it in 
to the coffee cold and make yourself a mocha slushy. It's really delicious, super energizing, and it's not packed with all that sugar that you might find in a similar type beverage from your local coffee shop. And it's less than $3 per serving, which I think is pretty much unheard of these days from a coffee shop. Their protein powder has no fillers, it's completely grain free, and each batch is tested to make sure there's no pesticides or any contaminants. It's really high quality. For example, the new sweet vanilla flavor has actual vanilla bean in it as opposed to vanilla flavoring. So very good on, I, I think it's delicious. Try it in your coffee uh, if you're trying to cut out uh, creamers and uh, sugars in your coffee. It's really good that way to make like a coffee slushy. So hopefully I have put your mind at ease that drinking coffee, at least in moderation, is very safe and it's not going to cause acne. The devil's in the details, how much you consume and what you're adding to it. Now, if anything, we have evidence that drinking coffee may help your skin long-term. There are some studies that show that coffee drinkers have a lower risk of certain skin cancers. I have another video, you guys, that goes into detail about all the health benefits associated with coffee drinking. So check that out. I'll list it down below for you guys if you wanna go back and, and learn more about how coffee can help your overall health. But suffice it to say that in moderation, coffee is just fine and actually you might consider it a health food. What about applying coffee to your skin? You know, whenever there's something that's good for you, skincare companies are gonna try and grind it up and put it in a cream and charge you a bunch of money for it. Is there any, is there any benefit to putting coffee on your skin? Well, the caffeine in coffee, when applied topically, actually can help with certain skin issues. It can transiently reduce redness. It also can help in reducing some irritation. Of course, caffeine is an antioxidant, so maybe it can help in fighting some of those free radicals that your skin sees when you go outdoors from things like ultraviolet radiation and pollution, tobacco smoke. Whether or not you wanna take a bath in coffee, uh, but yes, there, there is good reason to consider topical caffeine at least for some temporary improvement in redness, irritation, and improvement in the appearance of the look of cellulite. Takeaway points from this video, when consumed in moderation, coffee is more than fine and it's safe and it might actually translate into better overall skin health depending on how you take it, how much you consume, if you're adding sugar and things like that. And when applied topically, it can yield at least some temporary benefits in the look of redness and cellulite. For those of you out there who are coffee enthusiasts, definitely check out the Four Sigmata Ground Mushroom Coffee with Lion's Mane and Shaga. You will not regret that choice. I was initially on the fence about trying it as a coffee junkie, but since, since having it, I've not gone back. It definitely elevates the coffee drinking experience. And if you're actually trying to cut back on how much you consume, it's a good choice because it's more satisfying. So definitely take advantage of the sale and my link down below to get an additional 10% off. I mean, it's an amazing savings opportunity. You don't wanna miss out on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.